There's only one difference between a crazy man and me. The crazy man thinks he's sane. I know I'm crazy. Salvador Dali. Hi, welcome back again. Now we experience a beautiful reprise of Cervantes' labyrinthical technique in part one. The Mizena beam, or Russian doll structure, the narrative within the narrative, which reflects back on the original narrative. The barber asks the group to give him license to tell a story that took place in Seville because it fits perfectly here. The story of the inmate who almost escapes an insane asylum by pretending to be cured has folkloric origins, but Cervantes crafts it to suit his own ends. For example, because it takes place in the Hospital of the Innocents, it alludes to the medical discourse of the previous political discussion. It also cuts to the issue of philosophy and knowledge because the insane man is a licentiate from Osuna, a minor university, which the barber contrasts with Salamanca. The story also contains more of Cervantes' criticisms of the Inquisition. He mocks the superficiality of differences between religions as if people of different faiths were choosing between Jupiter and Neptune. And he objects to the way that the Inquisition often stole and redistributed the property of people it accused of heresy. The inmate writes letters to the archbishop atop the church hierarchy in which he explains that his relatives had him committed in order to take control of his estate. Did you know the trope of mise en abime, that is, the structure of the Russian doll or the Chinese box, refers to the effect produced by the novel's multiple narrative frames. Think of the sensation of infinity that you get when you place two mirrors opposite each other. Note how this also alludes to Don Quixote's own situation at the beginning of part one, where his insanity had caused him to stop managing his affairs. Note too, that there is something universally poignant about the plight of the second inmate who protests that he is not insane. You're free, you're cured, and you're sane, while I'm crazy, I'm sick, and I'm confined. The story's own internal conclusion as well as Don Quixote's reaction to it, underscore the power dynamics involved in laughter when the chaplain sent by the archbishop has to acknowledge that the man he has come to free is indeed still insane. Even so, Lord Neptune, it would not be a good idea to upset Lord Jupiter. What do the insane man and Don Quixote have in common? A, their constrained freedom. B, their love for dogs. C, their purchases of new lands. Correct answer, A, their constrained freedom. He becomes the object of the laughter of the rector and his assistants who have warned him as much. Moreover, the chaplain is clearly humiliated by whose laughter the chaplain was rather mortified. As he was in part one, Don Quixote is angered by this laughter. He realizes full well that the barber has just compared him to an insane man pretending to be cured. I, Lord Barber, am not Neptune, the god of waters, nor am I trying to persuade anyone that I am clever when I am not. Also, Don Quixote twice calls the barber rapista, a pejorative term meaning shaver, but which can also mean thief. That's all for now. We will see each other in the next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.